Welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about insulin resistance and PCOS. So, for those of you who have not joined me before, my name is Heather Rodriguez. I'm an herbalist and nutritionist, and my team and I help couples who are preparing for conception, those who are overcoming fertility issues, or preparing for medical fertility treatments through the use of lifestyle changes, herbs, diet, nutrition, etc. You can find out more about what we do at naturalfertilityinfo.com, but let's jump into today's video. I wanna talk about insulin resistance and how it is affecting PCOS and someone's ability to get pregnant. This is one of the main causes of infertility currently. So it's a really important topic and I want you to understand what's happening at the root cause and not just focus on the outward symptoms that are appearing. So PCOS appears in a lot of different ways for different people. Some people might be experiencing lack of ovulation, really long cycles, no period, hair growth on the face, chest, back, places that they normally would not have hair growth, balding, um, weight gain uh, around the belly, a lot of different ways, um, polycystic ovaries, there's a lot of different ways that PCOS presents itself. But the underlying causes tend to be actually the same. So regardless of how it's presenting for you, we wanna take a step back and understand the root causes. And one of the main ones is insulin resistance. So I'm gonna really simplify it because um, there's it's a very complex process that happen that's happening but basically what insulin resistance is is there has been cell damage from inflammation to the cells and when we eat we have glucose or sugar in the blood especially if we're eating a lot of carbohydrates or sugar it'll be in the blood and in, in a normal response for the body the body will release insulin which is signaling to the cells to store that sugar for later so that there is an energy source later on. Well, in the case of insulin resistance, those cells do not hear the message. It's as if there was no message that ever happened, so there's still sugar in the blood. Then the body releases more insulin so that the cells can uptake that sugar, and again, the cells are not getting the message, so there's now sugar in the blood, and there's also uh, high amounts of insulin. Well, what can happen over time is insulin and sugar in the blood over periods of time can actually cause cell damage. It can cause damage to the cells, which in turn causes this entire cycle to continue of the cells not hearing the message of the insulin, as well as can, help, can cause um, damage to egg health and cause the ovaries to produce even more testosterone, more than is usual. So that's how you can see down the road, you can start seeing those symptoms of PCOS. You can start seeing the um, follicles not maturing because there's not, um, there's not enough of other hormones because of the amount of testosterone in the system. You can see how that affects a cycle, lack of ovulation, and so on. So insulin resistance is something that actually can be managed and you can manage it yourself without medications. There are some medi medications that you can talk to your doctor about to help manage that, but diet is one of the best ways and we've seen great success with it. Um, so when it comes to diet, you can, you can watch more about that. I did a whole video on PCOS and diet and specifically what you can eat, but you wanna make sure to keep your blood sugar levels low. You basically don't wanna be adding more sugar to your system for your body to process because it won't get the signal to process it and that starts the whole cycle. You also will want to look at reducing inf inf um, high inflammatory foods. So these will basically be foods that are processed, highly processed grains, bread products, um, donuts, candies, um, those types of foods that are gonna not only increase your blood sugar levels, but they're also known to be inflammation provoking foods. So that's in, uh, insulin resistance in a nutshell. There is a lot more complexity to it, but that is uh, the information I feel that you need um, to get started, do more research on it. But that is how you can affect through diet, through every single meal, you can affect your PCOS through that. So I wanna empower you with this information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at naturalfertilityinfo.com. You can go contact us. We're here to help. This is our mission and our passion. And through education, empowerment, and support, you can help yourself on your fertility towards parenthood.